Hello beautiful people, welcome to my channel, I'm Tapi Alfred. I'm a food blogger, a recipe developer, a makeup artist, and a special effect makeup artist. On this episode, I'll be sharing with you a story on how I was kidnapped. So before I proceed to the story, just click the subscribe button and the notification bell below. So anytime my video drops, you'll be the first to get it. Don't miss. It was one month, one week, and four days to my one year old birthday. I'll follow my mom to the shop. I was a baby, so she will drop me and arrange her things. I and other kids from the shops around her, their mom will also be playing together in group, like four or five of us. We we'll go to some other shops to play. They were hanging around there. So on this faithful day, we all left as usual. Open, we will return back the way we left. All others returned back and I was not among. My mom was worried. She got up and she was looking for me. It was alarming and it was very serious. Other mom, they got up, they were looking for me like they will all go together and they will come back together. They play together. So how come? What is happening? They started looking for me. They searched the whole place, searched everywhere because the corner was very big. They checked everywhere. They couldn't find me. They got to a shop where they sell bags. One of the shop said, we came and we left to other shop as usual that we were not in our shop. So they asked for the tailor shop that was that we also normally go to play. And the tailor lady said we were not in a shop that we came and we left. But something kept telling my mom that from the look on that woman's face, she knows something. The way she was frightened. So my mom was curious and my mom asked and she said she didn't see me that I didn't come to our shop that day. It was the best I came when they all left that I didn't come to our shop. They suspected something. It was a waiting mom. She doesn't have a child yet. She was trying to conceive a child. So she wasn't coming forth. And she's getting matured. My mom was pressuring her. Like, okay, at least did you see her? Or did you see when she passed? Because definitely they would have passed the front your, of your shop. And others would have seen her. And you would have seen her. She was... In denial, my mom put a call to my dad, and as usual, they called the police, so it was getting crowded and it was really alarming. And everybody was worried, they looking for me because the child cannot just go missing. There are a lot of steps that the child would climb for this child to get down, and they know that I cannot do that at my age. They brought a suggestion that whosoever did not speak up, they will take the issue to the palace, and that would be the height. I won't show mercy on them at all. So in that fear, we all need to find this child. My mom was crying. She was worried. She was like, I don't allow this child to play alone. Our neighbors were always saying, free this child. Let this child play. You cannot just be keeping her always or be carrying her always. So that was the reason my mom allowed me to be playing with other children before we started moving to shop up to play. So since nobody thinks of something like that, said, playing on our own until that particular day it was getting towards evening it was getting really late and people started packing up to leave their shop the manager of the um, place said okay we should start going to the palace lady that was that tailor that knew something about she was really scared and she knew the implication she knows everything so she was very quick to talk she started she knelt down she was apologizing and she's so sorry she was crying that she's so sorry that it wasn't her fault that it was a voice speaking to her to take the child home then she started taking care of the child that she didn't she wouldn't know that they would think of that situation or she wouldn't know that it would be this serious to call police and the rest she just thought that okay maybe my mom will just forget about the whole issue maybe my mom would think that somebody that came and took me away then my mom wouldn't take it this far maybe sometime she would try to conceive again and give it to another child and forget about me since she herself couldn't get pregnant that was just what she was thinking she didn't know that it wasn't making sense she said that she sorry when we all came to our shop they were all playing together there some slept in our shop she picked interest in me because i was so fine i was beautiful i was fair and i was chubby so she picked interest and she liked me well she brought me out because she didn't allow them at first to enter inside our shop, she stopped them. So she brought me out from where I was. I was still sleeping, but she brought me out. She didn't succeed to take me away because she wanted to grab me and take me away according to her. But she didn't succeed because everybody got away very fast. It was so fast, so she couldn't succeed to take me out. My second kidnap story was a Friday. It was actually late, so I was coming back from work. 
and I entered into a vein of a taxi. So when I stopped, I entered into the car. It was just me and the driver. We were just a few minutes away. He had made the call that in the package. I wasn't suspicious at all. I wasn't thinking of anything negative. So it was when I noticed the door sound, they pinned down all the doors. So I acted as if nothing was happening. So I just played along. And then I was suspecting. I noticed strange moves. I started praying. I started praying that nothing should go wrong with me, that we get home safe and strong and healthy, that nothing would go wrong with me. I was praying. He would look at me, he would drive, so I was suspecting something. And suddenly he took the wrong turn. It was kind of a bush path. But there was a street in it, just moving very fast. He was riding so fast. I was even trying to tell him to slow down that. The driving was not proper and that this is not where we were supposed to pass. I was supposed to pass the other way. So he was giving an excuse that maybe there will be um odor at the front and I know that place I didn't bother panicking too much or stressing myself because I know the God I served does not fail me. I was speaking in tongues, I was praying under my breath. And then I didn't know what happened. It was so sudden. The tire pulled out, then the car drove towards a transformer. For those not in Nigeria, a transformer is like a power supply. It was riding towards the transformer. The transformer gate was put. The car just stopped at the front of the transformer. That day, I was so grateful. God saved me. So that was my second kidnap story. I hope you enjoyed and you had a great time. I'll be posting I was poisoned three times on my next video. So please subscribe so you can enjoy. That one is more interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please subscribe.